and it's one of the later questions and um, it does try to walk you through through the hint but uh, I guess what I find is that um, when people struggle with the physics especially at uh, for a class like this uh, conceptual physics the main reason you struggle with the physics isn't so much that um, you are having difficulties with the mathematical material. The amount of algebra that you have to do, amount of math that you have to contend with, it's actually not that much. It's uh, doable. But um, what I think people are struggling with and kind of causing difficulty for themselves is that um, you have a question that's mainly conceptual and you're trying to approach it uh, from purely formulaic mathematical point of view and you end up uh, trying a bunch of formulas that don't apply to the situation and that's very frustrating and basically the, um, the, the key part of physics that I want you to get and you are rewarded in this class for getting are the core concepts. So this problem, it, it's actually written in a way to kind of throw people off course if you are just used to looking at formulas from the textbook and using. And um, so I think it's worth illustrating, illustrating that here. Let me just paste it here because um, uh, this is a bit, uh, has a little bit of a lot nicer interface for writing. Um, and I guess I don't want to make it any smaller. So, so yeah, let me do this here. It says, consider the following scenario in application of Newton's law. And it is uh, meant to be a hint that it's a Newton's laws that you should be looking at. Uh, a box of mass, um, 46 kilogram. If I end up using symbols, I'll use a symbol M for that. Sits on a wooden floor. Tommy comes along and tries to push the box horizontally. As Tommy tries to push the box with a force of 23 newtons, the box won't budge. What is the net force on the box? And as you're reading this, if it feels like the question hasn't given you enough information, this is what I mean by uh, getting the core concepts. So since uh, the question did try to give you a hint to that this is about application of Newton's law. Let me write down one of Newton's law. It's really the only one of Newton's laws where you directly see uh, mathematical quantitative material. It's a Newton's second law, which says that the um, acceleration of an object is given by the net force divided by mass of the object. And, um, and it, it's really easy to underestimate Newton's second law. And this problem is meant to illustrate problem solving reasoning steps that involve Newton's second law. So as you read through this uh, question, I really want you to imagine the scenario. You have some, um, you have some wooden floor uh, in green and you have a box sitting on it and you have someone who's trying to push it horizontally and the question tells you that the box won't budge all right what kind of implication does that have i want you to consider this scenario and think about that specifically what kind of implication does it have for the acceleration. And after a little bit of thinking, I hope you come to this realization that acceleration is zero for the box. So once you get zero net acceleration, then you can get net force very quickly. The net force on the box is zero newtons. And that is actually what the hint tries to walk you through. Good. And 
So it's a multi-part question. My goal in this writing this question was really to have you walk through a reasoning in a problem like this. So uh, we'll continue walking through this um, uh, scenario that we have outlined. All right, it now says, eventually Tommy is able to overcome the friction force and move the box. As Tommy pushes the box with a force of 55.2 newtons, the box slides at constant speed. And it's asking for magnitude of friction force. All right, so that's uh, what I want you to imagine. You have a box that's uh, still being pushed with some force and it says that it's uh, moving with some constant speed V. All right, then he, because we are applying Newton's laws and really Newton's laws relate to acceleration, I want to ask this question first. What is the acceleration of the box? And if you paid attention in chapter two, kinematics, as you read this description, the box is sliding at a constant speed, you know what the acceleration is. The acceleration in this case is still zero. If it's moving at a constant speed in a straight line, then the velocity isn't changing. So the acceleration is zero. So if I were to ask the net force as before, you would actually answer the same way. You would say net force is zero. But pay attention, I'm asking for magnitude of friction force. So you need to do, go through additional reasoning steps to figure out the friction force. And this is where the force diagram is useful. In this class, we don't put uh, so much emphasis on force diagram or what we call free body diagram. Um, you do see some examples of that in your textbook. So let me just quickly go through that. If I'm drawing free body diagram or force diagram of the box, this is what I would draw. I would draw the force that the Tommy is applying. Now, if I just end here, I have a little bit of a problem because it seems as though there should be acceleration that way. But I know from the reasoning I just went through that acceleration is zero, which means the net force should be zero. So there should be another force opposing that the, opposing the force that the Tommy is applying and that's the friction force. And in order for the acceleration to be zero, I know that the net force must be zero which means the magnitude of the friction force and the force that the Tommy is applying, they must be equal to each other so that they balance each other out and the box doesn't accelerate one way or the other. It gets pushed, well, it slides at a constant speed while it's not accelerating. So the magnitude of the friction force, it must be equal to the friction force, or not friction force, it must be equal to the force that Tommy is applying. So this must be, 55.2 newtons. All right, let's keep on going. It says when Tommy stops pushing, the box starts to slow down, assuming nothing else changed from B above, at what rate does the box slow down? Well, um, in B, I figured out the friction force. So it seems like that's uh, the thing to use. So it says when Tommy stops pushing, the box starts to slow down. So when Tommy stops pushing, this free body diagram that we have drawn, it gets modified a little bit. And the modification is, well, Tommy isn't pushing anymore, so there's no force due to Tommy anymore. So the net force on the box is the friction force um, from the floor. So, all right, so I know the net force that means I can use the mass to get the acceleration. Oh, I think I had the mass from above, uh, 46 kilograms. So um, let me use a calculator. I don't wanna do that in my head. So 46, oh wait, wait net force, 55.2 Newtons 
divided by 46 kilograms should give me 1.2 meters per second squared. So that's my answer to the acceleration that the box should be undergoing. It's the rate at which it's slowing down now that Tommy is not pushing anymore. All right. Finally, um, it says when the box slides onto blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is the part that I care about. Acceleration changes to 0 0.48 meter per second squared. What is the magnitude of kinetic friction force? So um, I kind of glanced at the free body diagram, the force diagram again, to kind of think through if anything should now change now that the box has slid onto a different floor. And in the grand scheme of things, not much. I mean, the, the magnitude of friction force will change, but what still doesn't change is that the friction force is still the only force on the box. So the, uh, the acceleration, which is connected directly, oops, uh, acceleration, which is connected directly to the net force, um, is just the friction force. So, um, so let me do this here. So from this equation here, the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So let me do the previous mass, 46 kilograms, times 0 0.48 uh, meter per second squared. So 46 kilogram times 0 0.48 is equal to 22.08 or uh, 22 point, um, uh, 22.1, I'm just gonna round. I don't have to round, just rounding. 22.1 Newtons. And this is the net force, but from the reasoning I went through earlier, you can see that that also should be the magnitude of kinetic friction force. So 22.1 Newtons. So that's the reasoning process you should go through for a problem like this. Now, I want you to take notice of how, despite the mention of the words like friction, I never used the uh, formulas for friction force you might have seen in your textbook sections, I forget which section. There were formulas like a kinetic friction force being equal to coefficient of friction times normal force and how the uh, static friction force is less than equal to coefficient of friction times normal force. All these formulas, you know, they are not bad formulas. And there are maybe situations where you should use this formula to calculate. But really when you read through this question, you never really deal with the normal force and you are never given the coefficient of friction. So those formulas were never going to be useful. What you instead had to do was kind of think your way through Newton's law, application of Newton's second law. And um, so that's something you see in chapter three a lot where you see a question that looks uh, kind of quantitative, formula based uh, at first sight, but what really mattered were the core concepts. And once you get the concept, then the math part isn't that hard. And um, um, I, um, I, I can't necessarily promise that I'll find the opportunity for something like that throughout the entire semester. Sometimes it just gets mathematical, where you just plug the numbers into formulas. But really my goal in this class is to reward when people un understand the concepts of physics rather than memorizing a bunch of formulas to plug numbers into.